Hey guys, welcome to the supplemental video. I'm going to show you in this video how to post payments from a paper EOB coming from Medicare into your practice made account. Now this is for a PT session that was actually done in 2018, but we're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to show you how to create a claim just real quick. So I have a claim to post these payments to, and then I'll show you the main part of the video, which is how to post payments. Make sure you stay to the end. If you like the content, hit subscribe. Let me know what other questions you have. If you're using JNAP through Office Ally, if you're using PracticeMade, Therabill, any of the platforms, I'm happy to promote, um, produce information for you guys. But this is my demo account. So these are fake patients. I'm gonna go into one of the fake patients. I'm gonna go into template. If you guys don't know how to generate claims, just let me know but we're going to go into create a new visit and I'm going to pretend this was done April 1st, April fool's day. Since it's a fake claim anyway, we're going to come down here and we're going to say, okay, let's say this was a treatment in the visit, a uh, treatment in the visit, a treatment in the clinic. Um, we're going to pretend this patient did not meet the financial threshold. We're going to bill, um, $40 a unit for Therex, $40 a unit for manual. I've got all that in there. I'm going to hit update. And so basically what we just did was we created, what did we do? We created this claim right here. No, no, we did, um, April 1st. So we created this claim right here, $160. The claim is open. So what does that mean? That means technically it has not been submitted. Um, if I was going to submit this as an electronic claim, what I'm looking for is I need to create it. So let me get back in here, back into visits. I'm going to click create the claim. I can review all the info here. Again, keep in mind, this is all just fake information. So I can hit update. Everything looked good to me. Now the claim had been submit or created right here. If I was submitting this claim electronically, I just click submit. And what happens now is it's ready to go. Now it's not going to go anywhere because it's a fake claim. It's just going to get kicked back to me. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to post payments. So let's go back into this account. Let's go into visit history. Let's go into that particular visit. I took this, which is a real EOB from Medicare with real payments and real contracted adjustments. Um, it's for a completely different patient, but I wanna use this to show you how to post payments manually. So what I do is I come into the billing information tab I come down here to the bottom and we're going to post this payment. Now, right now, um, we're doing this as uh, can be an electronic payment because that's probably how you're getting paid from Medicare. The amount. So if I come over back into my EOB and I scroll over, we're just going to do this one line item. The total paid from Medicare for this um, date of service was $75.92. So I'm gonna type in 75.92. And I'm gonna go ahead and click add payment. Now what that did was it put it in the patient's account, but it hasn't applied it to the date of service yet in the line items. To do that, I'm gonna come over here where it says apply, and I'm gonna click on that little pencil. I'm gonna come down here and for primary insurance, so you can see I've got primary insurance, patient payment, secondary insurance. Medicare is the primary in this case. I want to come here and I can see 5931 is what Medicare paid for the Therex line item. 5931. And for the manual line item, 1661 was paid. 1661. Now I also need to apply the adjustments. And so in the Medicare course, we, we walk through like what 45, 237, 235, what all of that means. Um, on this particular page of the statement, it doesn't have the reason code definitions, but I can tell you that basically what we've got, grab my little pen, 
we've got your normal contract adjustment. That's the difference between the allowed amount and what was billed. We've got the sequestration reduction and a penalty that my particular practice uh, was issued back in 2018. You guys won't have that penalty. And then we've got the MPPR reduction. If you don't know what MPPR is, I've got a whole video on it. But basically, there's two ways that you can ultimately apply these contract adjustments. You can do them one by one, line item by line item. And if you use the electronic payment remittance advice, the import feature, that's what would happen. You get each of those listed. Um, another way to do it, if you're doing this manually, is just go ahead. Let me see if I can pull up a calculator here. Hang on a sec. Uh, I would go ahead and just total them up. So let me pull up my calculator. And what we're going to do is we're going to say 2961 plus 180 plus 121 plus 1294. 4556. So I'll come in here, 4556. And let me get back into the statement for the next line item. This will be 1260 plus 0.55 plus 0.34 plus 5.66, 1915. Okay, now before we hit apply, I just want you all to look at what we've got here. So we've got the original date of service. We've got the CPT codes built. We've got the charge amounts. That corresponds to everything on the EOB. We have the remaining balance, which logically, just visually, if you look at that, you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's about 20%. Um, we've got the amount that's going to the primary payer credit. We've got all of the adjustments. Those are the reductions. So pretty much everything is done. Now here we've got the primary insurance, the secondary insurance. Um, you can see, let me get out of this. If I go back here, you can see down here at the bottom, they're telling us that it's been forwarded to the secondary. And we can see here the amount that's been forwarded. Let me get out of my pencil tool. Okay, so patient responsibility, 1937, that matches what I've got behind the screen, 1937. So um, all of my numbers add up right here. All I have to do is I can hit apply. And now what happens is you can see the payment amount was $75.92. There is no more unapplied amount. My balance that's being forwarded to the secondary is 1937. There is nothing for me to do regarding that. Uh, essentially, this is done. I can go ahead and hit update. And we're finished. So now, let's pretend for a second. I don't have it, but let's pretend for a second. I get the secondary payment. And so the secondary payment comes in. I'm going to click add payment. And it is going to be what we were shown here, which is 1937. So I'll make it 1937. It's going to probably be a check. You'll have a check number on it. And we can hit add that payment. So again, we've got the 1937. We've got zero applied so far. So I'm going to click apply. Pretend I've got my secondary paper EOB. So I go to secondary insurance. It's going to be 1513, which is going to take a look up here at the 19. It just switched to 424. And then when I look at my second line item, it's going to match 424. I've got zero applied amount. So I can go ahead and hit apply. And really, at this point, I'm done because now the, the claim is paid at 100%. The contract adjustments are in there. Everything zero balances. I can click these two to hit complete and apply, update. Uh, if I go back into billing info real quick, you can see that everything is taken care of. 
total charge was 160, applied amounts are here, zero remaining. You can see the payments that were credited here. Um, you can see who the payments came from. I realize that this payer type is listed as patient. That's just kind of a weird setup and practice mate, but you can see here where everything has been credited. Um, we can print receipts right from here. So if I needed to print a receipt for whatever reason, that can come there. If there was a patient balance due in the course, in the Medicare billing course, I show you guys how to create patient statements from PracticeMate and all the platforms are gonna be very similar. So if you need to mail an invoice, we go through an entire module on why you should try as, as best you can to avoid submitting an invoice to a patient, why you're always better to submit a refund to a patient instead of an invoice to a patient. But if something goes wrong and you have to send a patient an invoice, we cover that in the course. Guys, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this showed you how to go through and do it. And I hope you, you see why it's so vital that if you could do this all electronically, post all of these payments electronically, it would save you so much hassle in administrative work. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next video. As always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let me know in the YouTube comments what other questions you might have in terms of how to use PracticeMate, how to generate paper statements, invoices, um, print CMS 1500s, whatever you guys need, I can get it for you. Guys, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.